modern computers all have more than one core. Unless maybe you're in the Internet of Things stuff, um, but even your phones have multiple cores. So wouldn't it be nice if we were able to use those from our Jupyter Notebooks? That's where IPython Parallel comes in. IPython Parallel was actually developed together, almost together, with IPython. And originally was actually part of IPython. Then when they split the whole architecture and renamed it to Jupyter, um, they also split out IPython Parallel. So now it's its own package, although there's still quite a significant overlap in the developers. IPython Parallel is a framework, really. Um, This is you, or your notebook. It could be on your laptop, it could run on Jupyter Hub like it's doing right now, um, but it's the user interface part. Your IPy Parallel client then connects with the hub, which is run by the IP controller. Now, this one could be sitting on a different computer. For example, ELA. It then connects to the IP engines. And now we probably have to do some tunneling here, but um, the engines could be running on a node on Pitstein. So it's really a network architecture that separates these different components. In the easiest case, they are running on the same machine. And that's what we'll actually be doing later. If not, you have to make sure that they can talk to each other so that they can see each other's network interfaces. These are most easily be announced to the different parts through a shared file system. But if that is not available, you can just set those variables as well. So what I've done before was actually I had a notebook at home that I was connecting to one of our login systems in Jülich, which was in turn um, connecting to the engines running on the cluster. Not what I usually do. Most of the time I actually keep the notebook running um, on one of our login nodes because that just stays running, right? Then I can just close my laptop and go home and just reconnect. And if nothing untoward happened, this is just like when I left off. So here we have the client. Um, I just get this from IPy Parallel import client. And once I have that, I can connect to the IP controller. This is actually what I connect to. Um, I can define different profiles. For example, I could have a local profile that just um, connects to an IP controller running on my local laptop. But I could also have one that sets up this configuration that I just suggested. One thing to note, it assumes that you trust your network. So the networking working protocol used here that lets the engines talk to the controller and the client let talk to the controller in itself is not secured. So you either trust your environment or you put it into SSH tunnels. Once I um, grab my, or have my client initialized here, I can get the IDEs of my engines. And in this case, I started four of them. I'm 
once I've connected to my engines, I can create different views. Um, views are what I actually use to run something on my engines. And there are two types of views. One is called a direct view, where I basically tell an engine what to do. And one is a load balanced view. And the load balance view takes a bunch of tasks and tries to execute them in an efficient way. Views are generated by slicing. So I take my client um, object and slice it. So here, for example, I take the first two engines. This would be engines um, two and three, starting count from zero. This one, this D view here, would include all the engines. To use this from a notebook, there's magic again. I can use the PIX magic, so for parallel execution, to execute the line following. Here, for example, I do, um, I import NumPy. This line down here is actually run locally. For the parallel magic, there are both line and cell versions. So the line version, like here, just executes that line on the engines. If I use the cell version, it will execute the rest of the cell. Since this pattern here, that I want to do something remotely and locally, is fairly common, the cell magic version actually has a local option that will execute the following command, both on the local notebook and on the remote engines. So in this case, I um, print the version of NumPy, and it's the same both on the local node and the engines. Unfortunately, namespace mappings don't work that way. So when I do the um, from uh, import NumPy as NP, for example, um, I have to do this explicitly. All right. Um, the notebook itself actually goes far beyond what I just showed you in the slides. You'll actually use the engines um, to run some code. So, but there are some instructions at the beginning on how to start the engines. So follow those carefully and then work through your notebook. 